going to read the first five verses of Psalms 22. In August 2009, a small aeroplane uh, was picked up on the radar by the RAF RAF in Scotland. And the plane was causing a a tremendous amount of alarm because the RAF, after um, contacting, making making radio uh, contact with the uh, pilot, uh, they realized that this, this pilot had no idea that she was headed towards a mountain. And when they were able to speak to her on the on, uh, through radio contact, they uh, found that this pilot she was trying to fly to towards um, I think Presswick Airport, uh, but she had no idea that she was actually flying towards uh, the biggest towards the biggest um, mountain uh, 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 in Scotland at that time. Well, literally in the UK, uh, 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 Ben Nevis, I believe, is called. She has no idea she's headed towards this mountain. And finally, they're able to speak to her, get radio contact and, 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 and direct her. And, 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 and she's able to be led towards Presswick Airport. And when she landed the plane, the words she told people that she was very relieved, 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 relieved. See, tonight, I share that story to say this tonight. Terrible things can happen when people lose their way. This is not just true in life, but also true spiritually. When people lose their way with Jesus Christ, they begin to do and believe strange things. They begin to even act in strange ways. And tonight it's important we know what to do when we have no spiritual direction or tonight when we have lost touch with God, because I want to preach a sermon tonight, amen, I've called dry times. Because I want to let you know right now, in this church, there are people Cool, you are on the mountaintop. Things are going well for you. Bless you. Thank God right now. But there's some tonight, you are going through a dry time. And what I mean tonight, it means you have lost contact with God. And when we come to that place, and we're all going to be in that place from time to time, where we, we're up in the mountain, and, and times, and then we go down and thinking, God, where are you? Why aren't you there anymore? But God wants to help us, amen, when we come to these areas or these seasons of dry times in our walk with God. I want to preach on dry times. And we want to read Psalms 22, 1 to 5, a very powerful psalm, a very well-known psalm. Again, obviously, next to chapter 23, which is probably the well, the most, uh, it is the uh, most known psalm in the Bible. But tonight, I mean, we want to look at chapter 22, and we want to look at uh, uh, some words, uh, uh, inspired words uh, from David. Psalm goes like this. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me and from the words of my groaning? Oh, my God, I cry in the daytime, but you do not hear. And in the night season, and I'm not silent, but you are wholly enthroned in the praises of Israel. Our fathers trusted in you. They trusted and you delivered them. They cried to you and were delivered. They trusted in you and were not ashamed. Can we pray tonight and ask God to help us? Father, we love you. We thank you, God, tonight for what you're doing in your church, in our lives. Father, tonight I'm asking you would deliver, you would help, you would meet with those who are going through dry times in their walk with you. I'm praying tonight, God, this word, uh, oh God, as Mary did and as J- uh, Joseph did, Lord, I pray this word for those uh, who may not uh, uh, relate. Father, they will put it away in their hearts for when it is needed. Father, I'm praying tonight you be glorified and lifted up in this place. Uh, and all God's people said, uh, amen and amen. I want to look first of all tonight, amen, when God seems gone. When God seems gone. Psalms 22 is one of several messianic psalms. And when I use the word messianic tonight, amen, and it's speaking about Messiah, it's speaking about Jesus Christ, it's speaking about the Savior, it, and it, it is in several psalms, the writer, whether it be David, whether it be Hezekiah, whether it be the sons of Asaph, amen, they were inspired by God to speak up, amen, about Messiah, 
And in our text tonight, I mean, David is writing and, and he's writing about Messiah. And I noticed that because many of the things, if you read the whole Psalms, uh, many of the things that David is describing did not happen to him. But when you read the Bible, you find out these things happen to the Lord Jesus Christ. In verse one, he begins with the words, my God, my God, why have you forsake me? Well, all we have to do is go to Matthew 27 and verse 46. We see, amen, this prophecy, amen, lived out on the Lord Jesus. He says these words, the Bible says, in about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Elia, Elia, lama sabatani, that is my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The Lord Jesus is on the cross, amen, is literally hanging between heaven and the earth today. And at this point, for the first time ever, he was disconnected from the Father. They had been together, amen, in eternity past, and thank God they are going to be, they are together now, right now, in eternity, amen, present and future. But here, amen, for the first time ever, there is a disconnect, there is a separating tonight, there is a turning away, amen, by the Father from the Son. And you could imagine all, amen, that is going through in his mind right now. Yes, he was fully God, but he was also fully man. And at this moment, amen, there was a separation. You could say there was a dryness, but he, and he begins to utter those words, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? But before this tonight, amen, in fact, his first words were, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they do. And what I want you to see tonight, church, that Jesus first calls God the Father, Father, before he calls him God. God tonight, and he's glad to let us know tonight, amen, that he is father first. Tonight, amen, I am in my father, I am my children's pastor, but first, before I'm their pastor, I am their father tonight. And he's making that statement. Uh, he's letting them, he's letting us know tonight, amen, uh, that before God is anything tonight, amen, uh, he is first our father. Uh, and then he said these words, uh, Father, I commit my spirit unto you. And we know, uh, I mean, this is when he committed the spirit uh, and he said it is finished uh, and he gave up the spirit tonight. Uh, and I believe tonight he wants us to understand something we all need to know, church, uh, that we can always trust God as father, even though we don't understand him uh, as God. Because sometimes, I mean, sometimes God, God does things that you and I do not understand. We don't grasp, amen. We don't fully, amen, comprehend, but we can trust him tonight as our father tonight, even when we don't understand him as God. Church, it is important we know this because there are dry times in the life of every Christian. There are going to be times when you don't feel God. There are going to be times, amen, when you, it's going to be like God has left you and he's no longer present and you're literally walking or like this lady flying blind, having no idea, man, exactly where you are headed to us tonight. There are going to be times where we feel like we've lost direction. I mean, we don't want to know where we're coming or where we're going tonight. And what we need to understand at these times when we lose direction tonight, amen, when we feel like God is gone, it happens for several different reasons number one tonight it can happen because it is a time of sifting the bible speaks about god hiding his power in habakkuk chapter 3 verse 4 it says and his brightness was as the light and he had horns coming out of his hands and there was the hiding of his power tonight at times god amen himself will hide not just himself but he will hide his power from us and he does this tonight amen in order to sift us the sifting process tonight was when you would separate wheat from the chaff and the bible tells us there was a time that jesus turns to Simon peter and says simon simon satan has sought to sift you as wheat and the whole process of sifting wheat would be i mean in ancient times they would have like a big sieve and they'll put wheat on there but the church there was always chaff mixed up uh, with the wheat so they would have this massive uh, kind of sift and they'll throw uh, the wheat in the air and because chaff was light the wind would just blow it away but because wheat was solid wheat can be depended upon wheat was strong it would fall to the ground and be caught and that's how they would separate the chaff from the wheat now imagine if we did that with you imagine if we took you and threw you up in the air see you know i remember my kids were small and every parent from down the time you know you take your child and just and the cat and you know they're like you know 
You know, first one. Second one. The second one, like, you better stop now. And the eyeballs don't want to come out of the eyes. And soon, obviously, they start crying. The more time you do it, the more obviously now what's happening is fear begins to set in. There's a sense of, you know what, I'm unstable now. There's a fear, you know what, you can actually drop me now. There's this, this, all this panic and anxiety things. And then begins to go um, uh, through our minds. Uh, and we're, 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 we're fretting uh, and we're worrying uh, because something is happening to us uh, that's beyond our control tonight. Amen. And when the Bible talks about being sifted tonight, uh, amen, as we, uh, it is speaking about the traumas of life. Uh, it is speaking about times, uh, maybe when you lose your job. Uh, it's speaking about times, uh, maybe an, an unexpected uh, a sickness will afflict your body. It is speaking about times uh, when you go through bouts or seasons of loneliness and now a man is traumatic now you're panicking now a man there is a fear gripping your heart but what we need to understand tonight is god allows dryness in our lives because god wants to separate the chaff from our character tonight god wants men and women tonight of character and one of the reasons dry times happen tonight it's there to reveal our motive for serving him. In John 6, 25 to 26, Jesus has done a miracle. He has fed 5,000 men, excluding women and children. We're talking maybe about 20,000 plus people. And the Bible says they ate until they were full. And we're told in John 25 to 20, uh, 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 John 6, 25, 26. And when they found him, these are the people he just fed. And when they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when, when did you come here? So Jesus answered them and said, most shortly, I say to you, you don't seek me, not because you saw signs. You're seeking me because you ate the loaves and were filled. That you, you're not coming because you want me. You're coming because what I can do for you. See, tonight, before God blesses us tonight, amen, he has to find out whether we are seeking him for the blessing or we are seeking him for himself. Okay, let's be real tonight, church. Let's be honest tonight. Many times what we pray for tonight, amen, we're not praying, man, that his will be done. We're praying that God will give me, give me, give me something. We want to be blessed by something. The other times, amen, it's times of stretching. And stretching is more than something we do before we exercise tonight. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, we are told that we are to walk by faith and not by sight. That means tonight, sometimes, church, God will withdraw himself from us so we would walk by faith and not by our feelings. Too many Christians are walking by feelings and not faith. And what happens tonight, church, when God does this tonight, he begins to stretch us. He begins to challenge us. He begins to deal with us where we come to a place where we begin to understand, as the song says, church, that even when I don't see him, He's working. Even when I can't feel him, he's working. And I tell you right now, you man, you are growing and you are developing far much more tonight at times of stretching than when you are at times of feeling tonight. The last reason tonight that we may sense that maybe God is no longer there is because of times of sin. Second Corinthians chapter five, verse 21 says this. This is speaking about Christ. For he made him, this is God the Father, and he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us. He made him who knew no sin to be sin for us. Church, that is why the Father turned from the Son that day. That is why Jesus cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Because he realized, man, the father has turned from him. And the reason the father turned from him the very first time, because guess what? All our sins was placed upon him. And if there's one thing the father cannot stand tonight is sin. Listen to me carefully tonight, church. Your sins tonight uh, can separate you from God. Look at Samson. Here is a man, he's, he's acting a fool time after time, time after time, time after time, until it came to a place where the Bible says he shook himself and he says, I'm going to go out like I always did, but he did not know that the spirit of God had left him. Because there's one thing tonight, amen, that God will not tolerate tonight. It is sin. And church, there are dry times in our lives. And for whatever reasons they come tonight, you and I, it is important we find a way that we can get back on track again with God. So let's look at things 
we do for water. Because I tell you right now, when people are desperate tonight, they will take desperate measures. 2009, free fishermen in the Marshall Islands and in the ocean, they were found by a commercial ship after being lost for 11 days. Because the story goes, their ship, their fishing ship, they were, uh, they, they had had capsized, and they had, they had, they, they had drifted like a thousand uh, kilometers or miles away, and they ended up by New Guinea, and they were able to survive for several, for such a, uh, uh, you know, a long period of time because they killed a shark, and they ate the shark, and drank its blood. Can you say sushi? Not really sushi, but some of you are going to eat sushi again. Tonight, when a Christian loses touch with Jesus, they will do strange things to survive. I think about, still happens in Rome today, where you have certain monks who take vows of silence for years. For years, I'm not going to say a word to anybody because I want to honor God. Well, how are they going to hear the gospel? How are you going to pray to God? It's not like you can't, you lost your voice. You know, you, you look, in, 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 I don't know if you, you guys have seen this, uh, in, like in the Philippines, there are people who, who every Easter, they crucify themselves. And they get people to nail them on a cross. You know, my Bible says that Jesus died once and for all. There's no, there's no more need for any more sacrifices tonight. But every year without fail, these men were going to get crucified and put on a cross. See, tonight, church, somewhere, someone has lost touch with God. And church, when we don't feel God for a while, the truth is tonight, church, we, we can begin to drink shark's blood. Another word tonight, amen, you and I can begin to do desperate things because we don't feel God. How many know tonight, amen, Jesus did absolutely nothing wrong to be on that cross? And what we need to understand tonight is this, and I know it may be hard for some to believe tonight, but sometimes, church, and I want to underline the word sometimes, sometimes you have done absolutely nothing wrong. but we beat ourselves over the head. We go for every area of our lives looking for the sin that separated us from God. We begin to, we, we begin to maybe even go through times of just fasting and fasting and fasting because we're trying to get the presence of God back into our lives. Sometimes, amen, we begin to make foolish vows, promising God foolishness for things that we think in our minds that we have done to separate us from God. Sometimes as well, what we do, amen, we get anxious and we get worried about our state before God. Uh, that, you know what, you know, I, I remember years ago, uh, you know, you watch these movies, uh, uh, yeah, this, this, this guy, uh, or this usually is, yeah, it's a guy, uh, he's going to, um, I don't know what flower it is, maybe it's a sunflower, and he's pulling the, you know, putting one, you know, she loves me, she loves me not. She loves me, he's trying to find out, she loves me not. You know how we are, child? I'm saved? No, I'm not saved. I'm saved? Am I still saved? I'm saved. And, we're, and we're up and down and it's all over the place. Because we're desperate for God to speak. Now, I don't know where you fall in all of this. I don't know which one you are tonight. But I want to bring a little revelation I believe it will set you free. We are told, I believe, in Philippians tonight, that we are to be anxious for what? Nothing. But why are we so anxious tonight? God has told us to be anxious for absolutely nothing, but yet we find ourselves anxious. And I believe tonight, man, the reason that is tonight is because we forget this one important thing. It's found in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5. Listen to what the writer of Hebrews says. says, let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. Here it is. For he himself was said, I will, and I want you to underline this word, never leave you nor forsake you. I will never leave 
you no for thank you. Let me help somebody tonight, and I pray this is going to set somebody free tonight. Jesus hasn't changed his mind about us. See that when he says, I will never leave you, he hasn't changed his mind. He hasn't, he hasn't, you know, by you know, by, by and remove that from the Bible. It's there. He's he 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 loves you, he is committed to you tonight. Amen. He fights for you tonight. I love what it says in James chapter 1, verse 17. James inspiration of God says uh, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the father of lights here it is with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning and what that means in that church is the devil is always trying to get us to question God's love for us and he did that from the very beginning it comes to Eve did God say and he's always trying to take what God has put a full stop in and put a question mark to. Did God say, he fast forwards down to the New Testament. God in the flesh, Jesus comes down and he comes to him. If you are the son of God, turn the stones to bread. And he's trying to say to the Lord Jesus, if God is your father, if God loves you so much, why are you so hungry for? Making him question, amen, uh, God's intent uh, and God's goodness tonight. And the reason he does this tonight, church, uh, is because God's goodness, uh, it acts as a barrier against you and I when we are or, or for us tonight, church, uh, when you and I are being tempted. He comes uh, and he says, since God is good, uh, amen, uh, and he tries to challenge us, uh, amen, regarding our faithfulness with God uh, or God's faithfulness towards us tonight. Uh, but tonight, church, since God is good, you and I must come to a place and tell the devil, I don't need anyone, including himself, uh, to meet my needs uh, because it is better you and I are hungry in the will of God than fall outside of the will of God tonight. Because I tell you right now, once doubt begins to settle in our minds, when you and I begin to allow doubt, uh, amen, and doubt, amen, the goodness of God begins to come into our hearts tonight, amen, all of a sudden, Satan's temptations uh, becomes very attractive towards our lives. Listen, look at all the kindness. Look at all the goodness that God has done for us. Look at all, look at all, man, how great God has been towards us. Uh, when we have been maybe uh, tonight on faithful children tonight, uh, many times, man, what we need to do is when we are faced with temptation, is remember the goodness of God. James says he's the father of lights, with whom there is no variation of turning. And what that means tonight is, is God never changes. God hasn't changed. And God will never change tonight. God tonight is like the sun. And what I mean to that, amen, he's always shining. Have you noticed tonight, church, in fact, let me put it to you this way. Why are parts of the earth dark and other parts is light? Why, why is it right now it's dark in the United Kingdom, but in Kingston, Jamaica, amen, the sun is blazing out? I'll tell you why tonight, amen. Like the sun tonight, amen. God, amen, is faithful and is there. But the problem is we're like the earth. We keep on turning. God, there's not, God, God doesn't change at all. He's faithful. He's consistent. He's true. He's just and righteous in all of his ways tonight. In fact, listen to me. When we backslide, it is not because he left us. It is because we left him. Or you can say tonight, amen, again, like the, like the earth. Because we turned from him. I love what it says in Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 14. It says, oh, backslidden children, oh, return to me. Backslidden children, says the Lord, for I am married to you. Tonight, God is constantly shining like the sun, his goodness. Uh, amen. He's constantly shining truth. Uh, he's constantly shining grace upon our lives. Uh, and tonight, I want to admonish somebody tonight, amen. Let's not run away from him. It is upon him we turn towards him. So let's close tonight by accepting the silence and trust in his love. So I'll ask you again tonight, has God really disappeared? What do we do when we don't feel God anymore. In 1939, in preparation for World War II, the United Kingdom government, they, they, they uh, got together a, um, uh, a, a motivational uh, slogan that has, has recently, uh, 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 is going for a little bit of, bit of revival. Uh, uh, and and, and it's, it's the keep, keep calm slogan. I don't know if you've seen them. 
all over around him, just keep calm. I'm British. You know, you see ones there, and people, they, 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 they made funny ones now, you know, yeah, keep calm. And, and I, I like to keep calm. There's a comma. It goes, seriously, have you seen my household? You know, or, or keep calm and eat chocolate or, or, or keep calm. I'll talk to the hand, you know, because, you know, all these different things once. But the, the, the original term they had was keep calm and carry on. Keep calm. Carry on. So how do we respond tonight when it, when it seems like God is no longer there? The answer is very, very simple tonight, amen. Accept his silence and carry on. Just carry on. See, when God seems gone tonight, it is important you and I continue to walk in faith and in victory tonight. Let me ask you a good question tonight. When the sky is cloudy, doesn't mean the sun has disappeared. Just because you can't see the bottom of the ocean doesn't mean it's not there. God is present tonight. God hasn't left us. God is faithful tonight. He, he honors and he keeps his word. And I believe there's two things, amen, that we need to hang our hats on before we pray tonight, amen, regardless. Number one tonight, we need to remember God has a good track record. You see, when you invest in, in shares, before an investor or major investors invest in a company, what they do is they begin to look at the history of that company. They begin to go through the books and check how they performed in the past and things they did and how they were and how they performed in the past. If they've brought in dividends and, 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 and so there's been an increase in shares and profits, et cetera, and so forth, they're able to gave, uh, gain and gather other investors and say, this is a company worth investing in. And we can tell you, we can tell you, you this is worth putting your money into. Why? Because they've been, they've been faithful in the past to come through for people. Tonight, that's our God tonight. That when we look at the past of what he's done tonight, amen, we can have a confidence what he did in the past tonight, church, he can do again in our present and in our future. In fact, Jesus has always been faithful to protect those who trusted him. In verse 3 to verse 5 of our Psalms, it says, but you are holy enthroned in the praises of Israel. Our fathers trusted in you. They trusted them and you delivered them. They cried to you and were delivered. They trusted in you and were not ashamed tonight that is our god tonight that if you and i put our trust in tonight amen not only will god deliver us tonight eh, you have a confidence that god will not make you ashamed tonight but i believe also what we need to do is when we come to these times when it's dry we need to do what we know to do in other words Go for the checklist. Is there sin in your life? You feel like God is gone. Well, is there sin in your life? You need to be brutally honest about that. If the answer is no, then either God is sifting your character or God is stretching your faith. That's our God tonight. He's doing one of the, it's either one of the three. It's either sin, sifting, or stretching. And tonight, amen, if you're still unsure, if you're still woman and iron, if you're still uh, 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 not clear, I want to leave you with one scripture tonight that's going to help every single one of us. In Psalms 46, verse 10, the psalmist says, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Tonight, amen, when, we, when it seems like God is not there, when it seems like he's left the building, if I can use that term tonight, amen, you and I need to be still. Stop running around like headless chickens. Stop thinking, amen, that somehow is this, is that, that. Listen, he's God tonight. And God is going to be exalted in your life. And God's going to be exalted. And you will see it tonight, amen. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes in this place. And every head bowed. Every eye is closed tonight. What a wonderful God we serve in this place. Very quickly tonight, maybe you're here and you're not right with God. You know, people come through, go through times in life where 
things are not going the way they want. They wonder what's happening in their life. Where's their life going? And, and, and there is a sense, is this what life is all about? And what happens at these times? I'm going to call this the sinner's dry time where they begin to question things and, and things are not, you know, just wondering what's happening. And they're all over the place. And what happens? They begin to give themselves to, 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 to substance abuse and alcohol and, and drugs. And, and, and they begin to fill themselves with all these things and, and hoping somehow to numb uh, the, the, the questions and somehow to, to silence the voices you can say in their heads. And all it does tonight, amen, is like when you're thirsty and instead of drinking water, you drink salt seawater. All it's doing is making it the situation worse. Tonight, Jesus is called living water. And he says, if you drink of him, you'll never thirst again. And this building is filled. In fact, this world is filled with men and women who have tasted and found that the Lord really is good tonight. That what you're looking for tonight is not in status. It's not in qualification. It's not a relationship with some man or some woman tonight. It's not in more money. Amen. It's not amen, in a, a holidays where you can escape and come back tonight. Amen. What you're looking for is in Jesus. Because he's the only one tonight who satisfies. Tonight, amen, he wants you to be part of his family. But there's one thing that separates you from him, that's sin. Tonight, if you would turn away from your sins, because Jesus has dealt with the issue of sin, and put your faith in him tonight. Friend, you could come into the family of God. But also tonight, that hole in your heart, that emptiness, that longing for you don't know what can be finally satisfied. Quickly tonight, you're in this building. You're not right with God. You say, that's me tonight. Pastor, will you pray with me? I want to give my life to Christ. Just do one thing. Lift your hand up tonight. Put it down. Lift it up tonight. Here's my hand. I need Jesus. Amen. I see that hand. Anybody else tonight? God is calling you. Don't be embarrassed. Don't be shy tonight. You can try. You can Listen, you can go raving till you drop. You get excited for a few hours. You can drink. You get, you get, you, you, you get, you get drunk. Then you come back down to a horrible, horrible, horrible hangover. People are taking drugs and get paranoid. It's not fixing the problem. You need Jesus. Quickly, anybody else? Maybe you've backslid tonight and you want to recommit your life tonight. Amen. You tried everything else tonight. Would you come to Jesus? Raise my hand quickly. Slip your hand up. Raise my hand. I want to pray. I want to get my heart right with God. Quickly, slip it up and put it down very quickly. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. My sister, you lift up your hands. Look at me quickly. Look at me. Look at me. Your hands were up. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. You want to pray? Come. Come. God bless you. Amen. Thank God for honesty. Hallelujah. Praise God tonight. I want to speak to God's people tonight. Like I said, there's two groups of people here. There are people here tonight. Things may be going smooth and, and, and you're well and you're good. Thank God for that. Long may continue. But there's some here tonight. You're dry. You're dry spiritually. So the question tonight, is it sin? Are you in rebellion towards God and that rebellion has separated you from God? And again, he hasn't, you know, he hasn't left you. You've left him. The opposite tonight, God may be sifting you because God is trying to deal with your character. Your character is who God sees that you are. The officer, 90 man, God is stretching your faith. It's got to be more than feelings. We have to become men and women that mature in God. That just because we don't feel him, all of a sudden we don't feel like coming to church, we don't feel like giving, we don't feel like praying, we don't feel like being faithful. It has zero to do with feelings tonight. Tonight, amen, we need, to, we need to graduate from doing things because we want things from God to start doing things because it's right. That God displeases, it's right. 